What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, I just tried out a game called Pathologic 2, it's pretty cool, it's weird, but cool. Uh, Zach in today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge with a little story at the end from petty revenge because, uh, yeah, you get how it is. Alright, this story's called, accidentally burned down my neighbor's fence and she tries to milk me for $10,000. Judge humbles that ass up real quick. This sub has gotten me through a lot of boredom and has provided me with hours of entertainment. I figure it's my turn to tell my revenge story. So it's been about four years since this happened. I was about 18 at the time, working for a security company. There were constant call-offs and no-shows, have no idea why. But being so young and naive, I was constantly working 16-hour shifts and not coming home until 8am. Also, I lived with my father at the time. The time frame was around the 4th of July. I finally had a day off and my best friend was back in town for vacation. We decided to get together and chip in on some good old American fireworks. To be fair, I have had nothing but bad experiences with fireworks, so I had no idea how this would be any different. We got home with the fireworks and we laid them all out on the floor. Sparklers, bottle rockets, cakes, and Roman candles. I say, why don't we mess around with some sparklers since it's still not dark out yet? Great idea! We go into my backyard, where it hasn't rained in well over two months, and it is extremely dry. You see the problem here? One of the little sparkies from mine and my friend Sparkler made contact with the ground and made two small fires that quickly spread to a large area. I ran as fast as I could to grab the garden hose and quickly start spraying down the fire. It was no use. It was spreading faster than I could spray it. I handed my friend the hose and called 911. What felt like hours was only four minutes, and the fire was spreading to the neighbor's fence. The neighbor came outside, and they were fairly calm to grab their hose and spray down the fence, along with the dead grass in her yard. The fire department shows up, finally, and I tell my friend, only one of us needs to get in trouble. You should leave. He was reluctant to leave because he felt equally responsible, but I convinced him. I didn't want him to get in trouble and have to drop out of college. My neighbor was super chill about the entire situation, at first. I told her that we could talk about replacing the fence and get some quotes to repair it. She was just super grateful that everyone was okay. About two hours after the fire, the arson fire investigator came to question me about the fire. I told him the truth. I said I was in the backyard by myself playing with fireworks and accidentally lit the ground on fire. I had gotten off that day without being hit by any charges and was commended for being honest. Here is where it goes downhill very fast. About a week later, I get a knock on the door from my neighbor. I open the door and she handed me two pieces of paper for me to look at. There was a quote for the fence valued at around $4,000 and the estimate for lawn care valued around $6,000. These were really shady and just typed out on a Microsoft Word document. No logo or company name. She then adds, I will also be having you pay my water bill for three months because the new yard will need lots of water. Now, the fence this woman had before was raggedy and falling apart. Her yard? Dead grass, weeds everywhere, never mowed it. Now, looking at this paper, she wants a mahogany fence, a brand new backyard with flowers and trimmed hedges? I said, I need to get an estimate myself. This doesn't feel right. She says, Remember, you agreed to replace my fence. A real man keeps his promises. I shut the door and called my dad to tell him about what had just happened. He flipped the frick out and told me, Son, don't you give that floozy a single dime. He gives me the number to his handyman and tells me to take care of it. The next day, I had the guy come out for an estimate, and the neighbor ran outside flailing her arms. I did not give you permission to get an estimate on my fence. Technically, it separates the property line, so it's both of our fences. She calls the cops on me for having a contractor, and they ultimately can't do a single thing because I'm on my property. 
it quickly finishes the estimate off at $1,200. I also knew a guy who did lawn care from my time working at the grocery store. He estimated the lawn reseeding while she was away from the house to be about $800. After I get these estimates, I give copies to the woman and she is having none of it. I don't know these people. I don't want them near my house. They're probably really crappy contractors. I said, no, I know them personally. They're really nice people and do great work. She shut the door in my face and I went on my way. I ended up working a 16 hour shift that night and got home at 8 a.m. And this woman comes knocking on my door at 9 a.m. and demanded I speak to her. I explained, I would really love to do this, but I just got home and I have to be back at work in less than five hours. I need to sleep. She goes, what kind of lazy asshat sleeps until 2 p.m.? At this point, I had about lost it and told her, you can either accept my $2,000 for my quotes or kiss my ass and get nothing. She stood there for a while with her mouth gaped open, but she accepted my offer and planned to meet down at the notary the next morning. I spent that night after I got off work writing a contract and gathering the $2,000 in cash. The next morning, I wake up and grab this contract to meet down at the notary. I was thrilled to finally be done with this broad and never speak to her again. I waited for her for over three hours and she didn't show up. I get a call from her saying, I'm sorry, the $2,000 isn't enough. I'm having my guy start work on this project and you will be paying me full price. Oh really? After that, I did not say a single word to her and I watched for a few months as these guys turned her backyard into an oasis, complete with a small pond, brand new sod and flowers, the whole nine yards. Come to find out, she had plans to remodel these things for a long time and was just waiting for the opportunity to go through with it. Also, in this time, she used her remodel funds to go on a trip to Hawaii. You know how I found out about this? She was bragging about it on the neighborhood Facebook group and didn't know I was in it. I have a different Facebook name than my real name. Are you ready for the revenge? Now, four months after the fire and all the remodels, I get served papers to go to court for $10,300. At 18 years old, I'm having to hire a lawyer to work my case. When we finally do get into court, I lay everything out. The quotes, being harassed multiple times, not showing up after agreeing to a deal, not wanting me to get my own quotes, required by law by the way, and her bragging about screwing me out of money and I have proof of all of this. The judge looked at her and said, Ma'am, with all due respect, you're out of your daggum mind. Not only did this young man tell the truth of what happened, he offered to pay you more than he was supposed to. Your lawn was already dead before the fire occurred, therefore he is only responsible for the fence of $1,200. I will also deduct from this his lawyer fees, $800. So I burned this woman's fence down and all I'm having to give her is $400? <laughs> cool. She took a huge financial loss from this. Not sure how much the Hawaii trip cost her, but she was in serious debt. She ended up having to sell the house because of it and moved into a smaller house. Haven't heard anything from her since. Edit. Some grammar issues. Also, holy hell. I normally dislike people who put in edits like this, but holy hell, this is crazy how this post blew up. I also wanted to clear a few things up. I'm not saying that I do not feel bad for burning down my neighbor's fence. I felt really bad about it and wish we could have handled it more civilly. I would have been happy to meet in the middle or get multiple quotes. To this day, I still do not use fireworks because we could have really hurt someone. What I have learned through this though is it's best to take responsibility for your actions from the gate. The fire investigator had seen the leftover fireworks near the area of the fire and said he would have slapped handcuffs on me and I would be in jail for arson if I would have given him any other answer. 
I was not criminally charged and the incident was deemed an accidental fire. Thank you to the people in the comments giving me information about how much a fence actually costs. I've never had to purchase a fence before, so I had just believed what the contractor had told me without second thought. I'll take some time after the edit to address some individual questions. To celebrate how successful this post has done, I have donated $150, $25 for each medal, to the Red Cross Home Relief Fund. That's, that's very nice. That's very nice. Um, that woman, <laughs> wow. It's like those people that pray they get hit by a car so that they can sue. <laughs> Saints Row 2 actually had something like that, where if you got hit by a car, you'd get money. So people would just freaking just run into the street and get hit by cars a bunch so they get money. And it's, it's reliable. It's a good way to get rich fast. It's so funny. But that woman was expecting $6,000 for a fence? <laughs> no. All right, this one's called, Don't announce your engagement at someone else's wedding, or this might just happen to you. Last summer, I was at a cousin's wedding. His bride and her family had been close with ours since before I was born and the couple had known each other since they were toddlers. So it was a particularly exciting event for both sides of the family. However, after the ceremony was over and the party had only just started, one of the bridesmaids decided to announce her own engagement. The attention was immediately taken away from the newlyweds and brought to the bridesmaid, who I'll call Sarah, and her equally smug fiance. My cousin's wife, I'll call her Emma, didn't make a scene or utter a single negative word about Sarah. She looked like she was on the verge of tears, but she kept grinning and acted very happy for the other couple. This was unusual, as Emma is typically quite confrontational and speaks her mind no matter the consequences. Sarah later picked Emma to be the maid of honor at her own wedding, which took place last weekend. I wasn't there for it, but my cousin sent me some of the best bits on Snapchat and explained the whole situation. This is where the fun begins. Emma's two much younger sisters were the flower girls at Sarah's wedding. At the very last moment, Emma switched out the white petals in their baskets to blue ones she had secretly brought with her. She told her sisters not to say anything about it or let the bride see them until it was time to scatter them down the aisle. Sarah looked very confused upon seeing the blue petals, which didn't coordinate whatsoever with her theme. But of course, she didn't say anything about it in the moment. Most of Sarah's other bridesmaids were also Emma's friends, had attended Emma's wedding, and were in on Emma's scheme. At the reception, Emma's sisters and the other bridesmaids were tight-lipped when Sarah began demanding to know why there were blue petals. The wedding planner ended up getting a lot of abuse for not checking the flower girl's baskets before they walked down the aisle. Finally, it was time for the speeches. The speeches took place in front of a massive screen, displaying a loop of photos with Sarah and her husband, which had been compiled by Emma. Emma took the remote that controlled the presentation screen and, at first, she showed some pre-approved humorous photos of Sarah with Emma and her other friends to facilitate a couple lighthearted jokes. Then, at the very end, Emma said to Sarah that she must be wondering why there were blue petals instead of the white ones originally planned. That was when Emma displayed the last slide from her presentation. Emma announced in front of everyone that she was five months pregnant, and she just discovered that the baby was a boy. Hence, the blue petals. The last slide? Her ultrasound picture. There were shocked yells and gasps. Sarah had a fit, but those involved in on the scheme cheered so loudly that I sincerely regret watching the Snapchat recording with headphones. Apparently, Sarah had been very nasty to her bridesmaids before, driving several of them away and forcing the others to pay ridiculous amounts of money for the dresses. Emma and my cousin were eventually thrown out of the party, but they were all smiles. Sarah's fuming mother went to confront her outside, and Emma retorted with, Gentle, gentle, I'm pregnant. I reckon Sarah doesn't speak to the majority of those bridesmaids anymore. Honestly, that <laughs> that's really freaking good revenge. I feel like it was just the right magnitude of, yeah, screw you, man. 
All right, so this last story is from Petty Revenge, but it's but it's pro revenge ish. So, eh. all right, it's called "Got a Bully Suspended for Getting Him to Fight Another Kid." Now, with that title, this might not seem petty, but my involvement in this situation was so minor, I hardly consider it anything more. If I'm wrong, though, please feel free to redirect me. Anyway, this took place back in junior high. I'm nearing my 30s now, and this story still tickles me. So, I had this guy in a couple of my classes who was just a douche. A real cowboy boot-wearing dingleberry. He always liked to copy on me in our math class, which jokes on him, math has always been my worst subject. He only thought I was smart because I had a slightly above average vocabulary for my age. He also really liked kicking my chair as hard as he could to get a giggle from his groupies. One day in particular, I felt him messing with my shirt. I'm super non-confrontational, so I ignored it. This class is early in the day, so I go on without thinking about it. When I got home though, my mom saw what he did and was livid. He had written F U cigarette on my shirt in Sharpie. And no, I had not done anything to provoke this that I was aware of. It had been on my back and mostly obstructed by my backpack, which explains why no one else really pointed it out. Or they did notice and just said nothing. Some time passes and we also are in a shop class together. One day we had a sub and we're watching safety videos. I'm sitting right next to Dingleberry in this class, much to my displeasure. At the front of a class is this chill seeming guy we'll call Randy. Randy was taking a nap through the movie and Dingleberry starts chucking paper balls at him. It was about the third ball when Randy turned to him and said, throw one more and I'm going to beat your ass. Randy lays his head back down. Dingleberry realizes he's out of paper. He then asks me for a piece. I happily obliged and let come what may. Of course, Dingleberry tries his luck and Randy leaps over desks and beats his ass. The sub broke it up pretty fast and they were both sent to the office. I then got a wonderful break from Dingleberry for a week or so. And all I did was hand him a piece of paper that he should have just used to take notes. And here's an edit that I'm reading because it's funny. Edit. Holy crap in a hat! This post got more popular than I honestly figured. Thanks for my first ever silver. Seems like someone went through Dr. Seuss's scrapped idea book. <laughs> Uh, I'm good. That's a good story. Very, like, early 2000s school vibes coming from that. And I dig it. I dig it, even though it's much older than that. But that's the vibe I'm getting. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.